modern video games are ruining reviews. Let's do this. Hi, I'm Poetic Search, and on this channel we discuss all things gaming and today we're going to look at why video game reviews, in my opinion, are broken. Thank you for taking the time out to give the video a watch and if you do enjoy it, please drop a like and if you are new here, consider subscribing to help build the best community in gaming. So let's get into it. I believe that there are currently five things that are ruining modern day video game reviews and those being video game updates, exclusivity in terms of who's reviewing the game, embargoes, fear of backlash, and the talk that inevitably happens between reviewers behind the scenes. First up, let's look at video game updates. There is a famous saying in the video games industry, a lot of the time it's attributed to Shigeru Miyamoto, and that is a delayed game is eventually good, but a rush game is forever bad. This quote used to be true. It used to be true about two or so generations ago. You know, when the game that shipped on the disc or the cartridge couldn't be altered by an update or altered significantly by an update. Let's take Cyberpunk for example. The game came out bad for most. And after a year of numerous patches and hotfixes, it's finally becoming the game it should have been on release a good game. Sure, the game reviewed well, but that was on hardware that was far superior than anything a lot of us actually will be playing the game on. And essentially, it was like it had a filter on it, showcasing it in the best light possible, and not necessarily the light that a lot of us regular gamers would be playing the game on. And even more recently now, we are seeing Sony and Polyphony Digital push updates to GT7 that have altered fundamental things within the game, from adding some ridiculous microtransactions out of nowhere to making the grind for points infinitely harder. Sure, the gameplay is there and the gameplay is fantastic, but it is fundamentally a different game to what was reviewed originally by the professional reviewers. And it's things like this that make reviewing games today so difficult. Games are essentially a moving target now. A review today for a video game may not necessarily be valid for the same game tomorrow. I myself am unsure of how to tackle this. Maybe reviewers should update their reviews based on significant patch updates that come out for video games. What do you all think about that. Next, let's look at why embargoes are also ruining video game reviews. Now, I'm not talking about embargoes that relate to time, as in when reviewers can start talking about the video game they're reviewing, but more on embargoes on key features or key aspects of the game. Look, I don't want to see spoilers or the final boss, but to pick on Cyberpunk again, a lot of reviewers were forced to use stock footage, footage captured by CD Projekt Red, footage that they didn't capture themselves or experience. Again, trying to showcase that video game in the best possible light. Worse still are embargoes where you're not allowed to talk about particular features, be it good or bad. That's essentially try like trying to fight with one hand tied behind your back. How can you give an honest and accurate depiction of the whole game if you can't talk about key aspects of said game. If a reviewer is told to ignore key aspects of a game, how can they give an accurate score for that game? Embargoes need to change, and they need to change to allow more freedom to, for the reviewer to express their honest opinion. I understand why there are embargoes on time, that I get. What I don't get, and I'm sure all of you will agree, are why there are embargoes on certain feature sets within the game. Unless those features, feature sets are considered to border on the spoiler territory, they shouldn't be included. And even on spoilers, I'm almost 100% certain that there are gamers out there that wouldn't mind having a review that is littered with spoilers. And 
again, that should be up to the audience and the, rev the reviewer to decide whether or not they want to proceed with such a review. Now, let's look at why reviewer exclusivity is currently ruining modern day video game reviews. Now, don't get me wrong, I too one day hope to be given early access to review copies on this channel. But outside of the obvious, you know, the reach that the reviewer has, what is the selection process for reviewers? At the end of the day, developers and publishers release games to delight, inspire, entertain, emote, and most importantly for them, make money. Are they selecting reviewers based on which reviewer will shine their game in the best light? I mean, wouldn't you do that if it was your baby, your product, your game? I'm not saying that this happens. I have no evidence of this actually happening. What I am trying to say is that I don't think Turn 10 will be selling the newest Forza game to a reviewer who hates Forza and is a complete die-hard Gran Turismo or PlayStation fan. I just don't see that happening. That being said, if that reviewer was to get their hands on the game and say, do you know what? This is the best racing game I've ever played. Surely that reviewer's word should hold so much more weight against many, many other reviewers that are potentially biased towards the Forza brand. At the end of the day, it's all a numbers game. And realistically, you want to play those numbers the best way you can. But who benefits the most from cherry picking reviewers? Is it us, the gamer, that wants an honest critique of the latest video game? Is it the reviewer themselves who have worked hard to build and maintain the relationships and want to continue to maintain the relationships they have with the developer or publisher or is it the companies behind the games that basically want to smash your new records with the latest release of their new game who knows honestly who knows at the end of the day things like open critic and metacritic do help to level out the playing field but they could, there's only so much they can do but let me know what you all think below next up let's look at what could potentially happen behind the scenes and that is talk behind the scenes talk to be exact reviewers are human and humans talk reviewers are human <laughs> i know shocking isn't it but essentially all I'm saying is that they talk. They will talk about what they're currently working on and what they feel about what they're currently working on with each other. And that can potentially lead to unconscious bias seeping into their reviews. Imagine a group of reviewers in a group chat and one of them sa says that they truly hate a particular game mechanic, whilst all the others say how much they love it. Could that potentially sway how the reviewer perceives the game mechanic from that point forward? I mean, herd mentality is a real thing. So, yeah, I mean, it can happen. Like, it happened to me. I was watching the IGN review of Horizon Forbidden West, and re reviewer mentioned that he rarely fast traveled or mounted a machine. He essentially walked most of the game and went off exploring. And I found myself playing exactly like that. Even though in Zero Dawn, I fast traveled as much as I could. And I don't know if that's because the reviewer said it or if it's something I would have naturally done myself. Again, an unconscious bias potentially, but I will never know the truth behind the decision to not fast travel in Forbidden West. But again, it's these types of things that could skew a reviewer's perspective. For example, if that reviewer told another reviewer that, yeah, they've been just walking and not fast traveling or mounting machines, the other reviewer can turn around at the end of the game and be like, oh, it was very difficult, it's a very 
long, boring game and whatnot, just because they didn't really enjoy the whole having to walk from point A to point B. But because the other reviewer said it, they potentially might have an unconscious bias towards that playstyle from that point forward. Closely linked to the talk that happens behind the scenes is backlash. And backlash is a real and very, very scary thing. The gaming community can be very unforgiving, especially when liberties are taken with a beloved franchise. Don't get me wrong, backlash can be a good thing. I mean, look at Cyberpunk, look at the Horizon Forbidden West upgrade path, and hopefully soon look at GT7. These have all benefited or will benefit from the backlash from the gaming community. But as I mentioned before, if reviewers are talking with each other behind the scenes and they are the minority on a particular form, that backlash could be a very strong motivator for them to change the narrative on a particular part of the game or the overall game as a whole. I've read reviews and I'm sure all of us have where the score doesn't really line up with how the reviewer spoke about the game. This was broken. This didn't work. This was boring. This didn't make sense. 8 out of 10. Again, it's not something that makes sense, but it does happen and will probably continue to happen. And for me, that's probably a fear of backlash. Because a lot of people will just look at the score and not actually read the content or the thoughts that have built up to that score. It's a lot more easier to go with the majority on these things than it is to risk being outcasted by the community we all love so much. <laughs> I personally don't like the old school Final Fantasy games and I haven't really played any of the modern ones so I can't really cast judgement on those. But it's something that even saying out loud here on the channel, I have a bit of fear of backlash. But I invite you all to share potentially an unpopular gaming opinion you have in the comments below. So yeah, those are the five reasons why I think that modern video games are putting a massive strain on the current review process. Be it video game updates that change core parts of the game that originally shipped, developers or publishers forcing reviewers to suppress certain parts of game, or even reviewers fearing the backlash of giving a game a score that they feel will anger the community. What can we actually do? I honestly don't know. Review bombing is a real thing and isn't necessarily helpful. I guess potentially word of mouth will hopefully start to overtake review scores in the way we as gamers try out new games. What can I do if I ever get a review a copy for, of a game? Well, I'll try to keep all of this in mind and as always I will tell you exactly how I personally see it. As ultimately I know that it is my opinion that is valued here on the channel. I guess I will try to put some form of systems in place to mitigate these things I've discussed happening. But until then, please like, share and subscribe and comment below on anything we've discussed here today. Do you agree with the sentiment that modern games are harder to review? Until the next time, happy gaming.